but he comes before God, according to the word of God, and he accuses the brethren. So here he is accusing God's people every time we fall short, every time we do something wrong. He's there wanting God to do something against us. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him till seven times. Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened to a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him and, and I'm sorry, to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him. And forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told to their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desiredest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth. And delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. Together. So, so likewise, likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from, from your hearts forgive, forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Praise the Lord. We want to pray. Pray with me. Precious Father, in Jesus' name, this is a wonderful day to be alive and in the kingdom. And we pray your special grace and mercy, your divine assistance to each life here today. Father, you have prepared our hearts for your word through the worship, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that you do all things well. You are concerned about humanity. You are concerned about the body of Christ. For you love your church and you gave your son that we might live. So we thank you for that kind of grace and compassion. Thank you today, Lord, that those that have a special need for ministry from your spirit today, all of us indeed. So we want, Lord God, to open our hearts that you might bless us and minister to us in a way that we have need of. For only you know what we stand in need of. We thank you. And we trust you because you're faithful. Yes. And we honor you and give your name to praise. Take control now of the service and have your way. And relieve the oppressed. Yes, Lord. Let them go free now. Yes, By your divine power. Hear the cries of the people of God. And break every chain and every yoke, Lord. Destroy the enemy's dominion. In the name of Jesus Christ, and let him flee seven different ways. 
because of your divine love and your mercy toward your people. Thank you, Lord God, for your mighty hand of salvation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for hearing the cry of the oppressed now. And Lord, you've come to bless us and to strengthen us and to heal us and to free us, Lord, from the chains in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise and we give you glory. For it's in his name and everyone said, Amen. 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 Give him a hand clap of praise before you're seated. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Bless you and you may be seated. God placed on my heart uh, the earlier part of the week. And uh, he loves us so much and, you know, we always seek him to find out what are you going to say. We realize that, uh, of course, we're on TV today and this message is going out to the audience as far as the, the Hampton Road, Tidewater area, some parts of North Carolina. And I always in particular try to ask of the Lord for his wisdom when we're ministering to more people and this is what he said he said the pathway to a deeper life the pathway to a deeper life as I thought about that you know I believe perhaps all of us have this desire to grow closer to God We read the Bible and we see and hear certain things that God has done. And these things, you know, they stir our hearts. They inspire us to know that God is so good. And uh, sometimes we may feel like we can never get there. We can never see God do certain things in our lives. But God hears our hearts cry. He knows our needs. And there are times that he respond to us in ways that just to let us know, I hear your cry, I hear your, your, your desire, I, see, I hear your prayers and see your tears. And I want you to know that I, I've made preparations to help. So I pray that today will be such a day, a pathway to a deeper life. If you're like me, uh, you just don't enjoy stagnation. You don't. You know, year after year, if you see yourself just not improving, uh, certain things just keep happening week after week, month after month, year after year. Nothing seems to change. And it gets discouraging when that happens. And um, you pray, and sometimes it looks like uh, you wonder if God is hearing, although God always hears. The Bible teaches us that. And uh, we'll be talking more about the faith life in the midst of this. But just a little intro. Uh, in, in the church world, as far as the world as, and also in the world, there's so many things going on. It doesn't take but a few minutes to look at the news, even if you haven't been current. And to see what's going on in our world and see that it can be a very depressing thing. And sometimes with covid the things that are happening in the West, Midwest, the fires, just thousands upon thousands of acres burning, people fleeing for their lives. They were secure, it seemed, in their home, in their places. And all of a sudden, they're no longer secure. What they had was just burnt down. And now they had to flee for their lives. COVID killing people just unannounced. Loved ones taken, people just crying crying because they didn't expect that we're in that time when paul spoke about it in the word of god and yet in spite of that men are lovers of themselves and lovers of pleasure more than lovers of god in spite of the things that are going on in our world in spite of the desperate cries the borders just being filled from people from haiti and from uh, the other parts of the world people crying and fleeing looking for hope looking for something in America, America has been called to be the evangelist for many years ago. God so blessed America, but in blessing America, it was more than just to bless America. It's always just like he intended for the children of Israel, for them to be an evangelist to other nations. So other nations could get to know God. 
In the same way, they place on our dollar bills and every coin, every currency in God, we trust. You look at the Constitution and there's something about God. You know, our nation was founded upon the right principles. But sometimes years pass, generations pass, and they forget to pass it on. And so there rises up generations that forget the reason why America became great. There's so many times, and it's that way in the lives of people and even the church. Sometimes the church where God blesses churches and they prosper. And sometimes they forget to pass on the one that made the church great. And they forget. And they stop doing the spiritual disciplines that God intended. They forget to pray and to call upon God. They, they forget it was Jesus Christ that did all of these things. But I want to encourage you to know that it takes God to bless and prosper anything that is lasting. And so we, um, I was thinking about all of these things. I was thinking about so many people. There's frustrations in the relationships in the homes. There's, there's brokenness. There's strife. There's pain. There's pain in the physical dimensions of our lives, physical bodies. And people wondering, where is God? Where is God? And if God is so good, then why is he just allowing things to go over and over and long, over and over again? But there is an answer and there is a path to a deeper life in God. There is a path that reassures us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. There's a path that causes us to understand that he does not change. We change. Men may change. Times change and all of these things. But God never changes. If he was a God of compassion 2,000 years ago, he has not changed. He is the same God that's rich in mercy. He's the same God that's rich to all who call on his name. He said, call upon me in a day of trouble and I'll answer you. And I'll show you great and mighty things. That you know not. But there is a path. And as we embark upon the wisdom and the knowledge of what this is all about. That path to a deeper life. We just read in Matthew. The disciples was one of those times of instruction. And Jesus giving parables and sharing with them. Some of the things in parables. And, and in his communicating with them. Peter as he's always been outspoken, paused and said, Lord, he said, how often shall my brother offend against me and I forgive him? You see, the Jewish ideal was three times in a day. And so Peter thought he was being very spiritual by saying, shall, is, shall I forgive him seven times in a day? And Jesus, to, a, to such an amazing amazement he answered him and says I don't say three or seven times you thought you were being very spiritual by saying seven times in a day forgiving him when the Jewish thought was three but he said I'm not saying seven times I'm saying 70 times seven and you and I know that to calculate that there's 490. No one is going to have 490 incidents happen to them in one day, right? In the same manner. But the idea was this, that we would have a forgiving spirit. Yes. That is the nature. And now listen to what he says. Now. That is the nature of the kingdom. After he spoke in verses 21 to 23, look at what he said, 22. He said, therefore, therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened to a certain king. And he gives this parable telling how the king of this kingdom and the God of our salvation, what he's like. He forgives us at Calvary. He forgave us every conceivable debt. He healed us. He wipes our slate clean. Past Present and future. The only thing that we have to do in sincerity when we sin, if we sin, is to acknowledge it 
and repent. And God promises that he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's love. That's mercy. That's kindness. And so we have that as God's people that if uh, we sin, if we fall short and we do fall short, that we have Jesus, an advocate, a lawyer. How would you like to have a lawyer for a brother in the family? He's our elder brother. Isn't that right? And yet he's our lawyer, an advocate that stands before a holy God and pleads our cause. There is another one called the adversary, Satan, comes and accuses us day and night. Think what it would be like if we didn't have an advocate like Jesus. Satan sees a lot and he's a a, a, a liar and a deceiver but he comes before God according to the word of God and he accuses the brethren so here he is accusing God's people every time we fall short every time we do something wrong he's there wanting God to do something against us but Jesus Christ our advocate Pleads our case. Pleads our cause. Father forgive them. I paid the price. Forgive them again. And that's how God treats us. That's how he treats us. But in terms he wants us. To show mercy. To those that offend us. Am I right? See blessed are the merciful. For they. Shall obtain mercy. It's the merciful. And so I was reading through the scriptures here and what and Second Peter had to say. I was reading what he said in Matthew. And um, so the pathway to a deeper life can be for many of us forgiveness. And the Lord said stagnation or one of the signs of stagnation is unforgiveness. I don't want to go in circles, uh, you know, and I was asking the Lord, well, okay, what's an example, or who's an example of those in the Bible? Because any revelation we get, it ought to be scripturally based, am I right? And so God said, well, take a look at the children of Israel. He said they wandered, they were stagnated. They kept wandering around in the wilderness for 40 years. Yes. God gave the answer, but they never paid attention to it. So because they didn't pay attention to it, they wandered around for 40 long years. And a whole generation was destroyed in the wilderness of the fathers. So they were stagnated. Now God intended to take Israel through, and scholars say, I don't know, I wasn't there, that this journey through the wilderness was an 11 days journey. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But God couldn't bring them through. He was after something in their lives. And how many know that God will not teach you another principle until you get the first one? He's a wonderful teacher, right? And so it's important when we hear God talking to us, whether it's through the word or whether it's when you're in your devotional time or through hearing it somewhere. Once you hear and know that this is God, give full heed to it because it's for your life. It's something to make you better. It's something to help you get over a hurdle. It's something to help you in areas where you struggle with. God is life. And life comes from him. All right, so now as uh, 
and that's one of the things he said. That, so there was stagnation, and I looked up stagnation. And naturally, I did know basically what it meant, but still, I always have a habit of trying to look up words. One of the, uh, and uh, it says, standing still, not flowing, dull, sluggish. And it's used of water in a pool. And it says that water in a pool, after it's stagnated for a while, it begins to smell. Can I say to you that when we're stagnated, we're getting on somebody's nerve. I won't say we smell, but I'll say we're getting on somebody's nerve. So God wants us to grow. Because when you don't grow, you become a problem to yourself and all around you. So it's the goodness of God, it's the love of Christ to want us to grow. When we grow, we begin to see things differently. When we grow, we begin to act differently. When we grow, we begin to be more loving and more compassionate. When we grow, we begin to experience more of God's grace, isn't that right? So growth is very important. When we grow, there's more knowledge. There's more understanding. There's more wisdom. When we grow, we can, some things we, we will say and do that we, uh, we won't do it anymore because we've grown from that. Isn't that right? And that's, you, you watch the life of a child. When a child is young, they make a lot of mistakes. They do a lot of things here. And the parents are constantly, son, daughter, do this. Why? Because they're trying to help them to grow. So there's a learning process. And the more they grow, the less they do the same things. They learn. There's some consequences of what they do. So they won't keep doing them. Am I right? Because they're like, okay, mom and dad can get me for that because, you know, they told me about so-and-so. So, so after a while, they begin to stop doing that. Say, okay, that's not good. Mama said, son, don't touch that stove. It's hot. And so he looks around, and when mama's not looking, he looks around, and mama makes sure the coast is clear. Mama's not looking. I saw he's over here at the stove. He doesn't know it's hot. He's inquisitive. He wanted to know why mama don't want me to touch the stove. So he goes in to touch the stove. After he sees the coast is clear, he touches, ow! Mama says, boy, what's wrong with you? He ain't got nothing to say. Because he touched the stove. Isn't that right? So now, mommy doesn't have to tell him that anymore. He will never touch that stove again. Isn't that right? Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> but life is like that. There's it's a constant learning. And so when we come into the kingdom of God, God loves for us to be learning and growing. Learning and growing. And learning how this kingdom is about. And so thinking in terms of the kingdom now... He says, the, therefore, is the kingdom of heaven like this. In other words, this is a concept and a way the kingdom functions. And, uh, and verse 35 in Matthew 18 says, So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also to you if you from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. And so forgiveness is not for the other person, but it's for you. Isn't that right? Because we become stagnated if we don't forgive. Sometimes we feel, well, I ain't letting them off the hook, you know, and if they did that, it wasn't right, so I'm not going to. But it's holding us back. It's not holding them back. It's holding us back. Isn't that right? And so when I see it like this, oh, wow, okay, I don't want to be holding myself back, so what I got to do is forgive. God's ways are so perfect and wonderful. So, uh, and I've been there. I've been there so many times. I've been there many times, but it was in the process of God teaching me concepts of So there are principles to live by. It's just like laws in the state, United States of America. When a foreigner comes uh, and then he wants to become a citizen and then he wants to operate, then he's got to learn the laws of the land. Am I right? Because if he doesn't learn the laws of the land, let's say he runs through a red light. Oh, man, what happened? I almost got hit. What's wrong with those people? He ran the red light. He didn't understand what red means. Y'all hear what I'm saying? There are laws and principles in the kingdom as well. So he says, forgive and you shall be forgiven. Now, I can't change that if I say, okay, I don't, want, I don't feel that's right. But I didn't make that law. God made the law. Isn't that right? So when I follow God, there's blessings for me. And, 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 and God, in one of, the, one of the most divided places on earth is Sunday morning Christians. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it is. And we're the ones 
who know the truth. You can't expect the world to know kingdom principles. They're not saved. But the church is the most segregated place there is. Whites don't want to mingle with blacks. And you could, blacks don't want to mingle with whites because we this and that and the other. But the Lord is not like that. He's not like that. God is good. He's good. And that blood, oh my God, that blood that was shed on Calvary is not for the black, it's not for the white only, it's not for the Latinos. That blood was for every human being. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. It was the blood of his holy son that looked upon hurting humanity. Look beyond the faults of all humanity and the sin of mankind. And he wanted fellowship. And he knew that we could never come back to the Father if he never went and shed his life's blood. We were doomed for something that wasn't made for us. Hell wasn't made for us. But it enlarged itself. Because in the process of the devil and his angels, many people will go that will not hear the good news of Jesus Christ. So hell has enlarged itself. But uh, thank God that, look at somebody say, well, thank God, when, I'm not going to hell with the grace of God. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. God has prepared better things for you. You believe God. We believe God together. So back now to this. So the kingdom of God has concepts and principles and laws of faith. Remember what he says, without faith... It is impossible. It's not possible to please God if faith is not in operation. Isn't that right? I could not come to Jesus Christ if somewhere I didn't exercise faith in what he says. After I heard the gospel, I came to him and accepted Jesus into my life. I had to apply faith, right? Now, this can sound foolish, and to the world it is foolish. How can somebody save you? How can a man dying on the cross uh, 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 cause you to go to heaven? And it's, it's nonsense to the Greeks, right? But to those that, are, that believe, it's not nonsense, right? We believed, and all of a sudden Christ came into our lives, and there was a witness in our heart that we belong to God. Why? Only because we exercise faith. 